was raided. Somebody tried hacking my password. I want to say it here on your video. He's a jerk. What he did was malicious, and uh, I hope YouTube uh, removes his channel. Since the creation of the Day of Scams website, much has come out in relation to the game and misrepresentation of possible factual evidence. Many of the concerns come from Jo, the lead developer of Day of Dragons, with contradictions to public statements and information currently available. This is also alongside apparent inexperience with large projects and unprofessionalism throughout the entire community. Allegedly, some of the artwork on the new Day of Dragons website was stolen and not under licensed use. Atop that controversy, we also find the game apparently was decoded and four lines of custom text have been added. It has also come to light that potentially assets that were not licensed to the game through different dragon models may have been used to promote the game in a more embellished light. After recent videos from The Gaming Beaver and IGP, I feel it's necessary for me to move forward and approach this as an audit of credibility. To be clear with you all, I have my own concerns, and I have my own doubts. I do believe we're going to see a game, I just don't know the quality of the game. I strongly believe IGP had some very, very, very strong points in his video which were founded and credible. His concerns were legitimate. The aftermath of him being banned from the Discord server and all the public statements from J.O. I don't agree with. J.O. feels it was a personal attack, however it was a very critical analysis of the information publicly available at hand. I can understand the frustration J.O. feels being put on a pedestal like that and cross-examined so harshly, and then the flood of people threatening his livelihood with swatting and lawsuits. I, I can understand it. But there are questions that need to be answered. You don't just garner $530,000 from people and not expect to show them anything. There are also questions about his company Be Awesome Games that I have concerns with for taxation purposes. This is given Kickstarter's policy on businesses garnering support and funding for projects. As J.O. said, he is a sole proprietor, and Be Awesome Games is not a legally registered entity or business. To break it down simply, if J.O. receives those funds as a sole proprietor, much of the money that was donated for this project is going away into taxes, a substantial amount. I'm not a legal expert, I am not a tax consultant. However, it appears that potentially in the state of where I believe this money will be going, it could be taxed as a sole proprietor by $185,000 to $210,000 versus if it was a registered company being around one hundred and six dollars to $128,000. Again, I'm not an expert. I'm not representing myself as an expert. This is just my opinion through some Google research. I genuinely hope we're not looking at a situation where over a quarter of the money raised is already gone to taxes. Furthermore, to a campaign that was improperly registered. There is one thing I do need to touch base on, which I also consulted a AAA developer over, alongside some other things. You'll be hearing that audio recording soon from a reputable source. A game, Dawn of Dragons, was created, and people have the conception that it was to say, hey, we created a game in 48 hours, that is Day of Dragons. And I do agree that there was some misrepresentation online via Twitter and other channels that that was the goal of this. However, while featured in IGP's video, I strongly believe this was just a case of, if we can make a game look this good in 48 hours, Imagine what a developer with a little bit more experience can do. The idea was to get the same looking game, even if it doesn't have the same functionality. However, I don't feel it is representative of Day of Dragons in its current state, given there is no UI, missing animations, and many, many multiplayer aspects are just not found in this version of the game. But just to debunk that, Day of Dragons was not created in 48 hours. It would take significantly more time, according to my dev consult, to create a game that is multiplayer with the things that are in Day of Dragons. This was just for the aesthetic appeal. The big question everyone has been asking is, was this a scam?
I don't believe it's a scam. I've even gone as far to consult a AAA developer, which you will hear the audio recording of that in a moment. Though there are still fundamental concerns with how $530,000 was raised. Obviously, I needed an opinion. And what better opinion than one from a game developer? I had a developer consult with a AAA developer, someone working on a very, very large worldwide known game at a very, very large studio. They can create an entire game if they want to by hand, with years of experience in the industry. For privacy concerns and the studio not wanting to be linked to this situation right now, I will not be releasing the name of the studio or developer involved in this interview. Their voice has also been heavily, heavily modified through audio distortion. They state, I feel like a studio backing this statement, even in just a connective sense, might be overkill and harm a legitimate indie project unfairly. What you're about to listen to is the opinion of an industry expert and strictly their opinion. After taking some time to process and what I've seen, the first thing is that I believe everyone saw playing as dragons in this life cycle scenario style game and they jumped on this project getting really excited about it without really looking deep into what there. It seems to be in a pre-production stage, and it's a solo project, so I think it was a bit too early to start asking for funding on that. The author seems like they're capable of learning and filling any knowledge gaps they have and bringing the project to some kind of complete state, but I don't know what kind of state that would be, and how long it would take to reach that is even more nebulous. If this is their first game, uh, I've never seen anyone's first game come out good. Maybe it happens, but I've never really seen it. Usually you have to make bad games before you can really learn how to make good ones. But here's the thing. People have already bought into the project. For better or for worse. If you're feeling anxious about it, maybe you should hold back any kind of active support that you're giving them. But the kickoff starter also just ended. So... Money's not even in their hands to be able to do anything with yet. Give it a little bit of time, maybe a month or two to see what he does. I would expect to see that they hire another programmer and an artist to help out. If I didn't, then I'd probably be a bit concerned. But here's the thing. If this is the scam, it's already happened. Okay, so you, it's bringing out the pitchforks right now on, on that bet which assumption is not, it, it's going to be the same if you do it now or if you wait a month or two to find out whether or not that's actually the case. So since people have already bought into it, I would suggest to those people, take a moment, you know, see what happens before we start the mob and head out there looking to, to get back what might have been taken. However, from what I saw, Okay, and this is giving the uh, developer the benefit of the doubt uh, that everything that I saw was created by them and that, you know, it's as presented. Okay, I saw some decent design habits, you know, documenting code, working, keeping the graphs organized and in readable groupings. Uh, I do think that they might be somewhat unfamiliar with some of the low-level systems of how UE4 works. But if they are working entirely in Blueprint, you know, that might not be a hindrance to the project. The thing about UE4 is that it was also designed so that, you know, non-career programmers could potentially make their own games too. Second thing, uh, from what I was told about these other uh, demos made by the programmers and showing up what it is, there was a big difference between something that has some basic flight animations compared to what this developer apparently has with their hatching, growth, hunger, thirst, and especially multiplayer. Because when we're talking about network code for games, that adds a lot of complexity to the code. It, it can get ridiculous going from single player to multiplayer. There's just so many different handlings, especially 
especially because UE4 has built in protections to try and prevent tree cheating, uh, or at least make it more difficult. So, you know, there, there's a big difference between those two scenarios. And then, as for uh, this claim that they needed lawyers uh, after receiving so much funding, I don't know. That might be true. Um, usually when somebody gets a large lump sum of money, more people take notice. So it's entirely possible that something like a finance lawyer suddenly needed to come into the picture and not only to validate, you know, all, all the funds coming in and managing where they go or something like that. I don't know the laws that surround that, though. So you probably need to talk to the lawyer to see how legitimate that claim might be. So a big prominent question has been, apparently someone got a copy of your game from Steam, and in that copy of the game, it was only a couple lines of custom code. Can you iterate on that a little bit and maybe shed some light as to what that is exactly? Yeah, so when I got um, approved on Steamworks quite a while ago, I was using their um, Space War app, it's part of the SDK. And so with that, all, all the testing I was doing was using the uh, Steamworks uh, Space War uh, app. And when I started working on the uh, server, you know, I threw together a server, it com testing uh, for, uh, you know, making sure it compiled. And then I just went ahead and I threw up a server build uh, on the uh, depot, uh, the Steam depot, and it basically was just a, had basic functionality in it. Um, so, you know, it, and it's 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 public. So the servers are free. Anybody can download them. You can download them. You know, through Steam. You know, Steam command with an anonymous login. Anybody can download it. So the server build they went ahead and they pulled down was just an old. It was just a build that I put up just to test Steam and uh, the connectivity. So all the stuff that they decompiled or um, analyzed out of that. Um, and then they say that, oh, he's using this and he's using that. And a lot of that stuff I'm not even using. Um, it's just plugins that I was playing around with, trying them out, um, seeing what they do. And um, they're all in that build that I made available. So, you know, for them to go ahead and pull pull a build that I put up back in, I think that build is like, was as old as May, um, five months old, um, and then say, well, we, we um, analyzed the game and um, we found out what's in it. Um, that server is definitely nowhere near uh, the server that people are playing on right now, stress testing the game with. Do you feel it's possible that people may have been misled to believe that the game was actually in coding development for two years? Or what did you mean by the two-year statement? And if you meant something else, are you able to provide evidence of you clearly stating what you meant by two years of development? Yeah, it was stated that, um, and it was, I believe that uh, in this Truth About Day of Dragons video that IPP put up, um, or IGP, I think that he misled people into believing that um, I somewhere stated that the game had been coded for two years. I had never once made that statement. I'd said that the game has been in development for two years. Um, I started working on the game um, about six months after my dad passed away. Uh, back in July 2017, that's when I began working on the game. I came into the game with a background in Java, mostly, um, as far as a programming language, HTML, PHP. I've done a lot of web design work. Um, I've also done some, you know, Java uh, programming on in software. So I came into this thing July of 2017, and I began working on. Uh, I tried out the uh, Cry Engine. Didn't like the Cry Engine, so I switched over to Amazon Lumberyard. Been about eight months developing a uh, game, an open world survival game. It was gonna be an open world survival RPG type game in uh, Amazon Lumberyard. And so then uh, Amazon's uh, licensing, um, they have a, as part of their licensing, licensing agreement, if, you, if your game involves uh, online play, you have to use Amazon Web Services. 
and I wanted to make a game where I could provide um, dedicated servers. You know, people, I could give people the dedicated server, and they could host their own, or other hosting companies uh, could host the servers. And and so, because of Amazon's licensing terms with Lumberyard, I had to um, look for a different server. So the options were either Unity or Unreal, and um, Unreal. I think was a better choice for the type of game that I was going to make. Um, so about, you know, eight months after that, I began developing this game statement that I made. Um, I began to learn the Unreal Engine. And, um, you know, when I don't know if anybody out there has ever tried learning an engine before, but if you haven't, it's it's not something that you just download, install, and then get right into uh, making a game. It's not that easy. There's all kinds of uh, uh, different aspects of the engine that you have to learn. You have, and if you're doing all of it yourself, you have to know everything. Especially, especially if you're making a um, networked uh, multiplayer game. I never made that statement but that I started coding the game in 2017. I said I began developing it, and originally there was uh, it was me and and two others that we were working on uh, the old project, um, and uh, eventually we uh, you know things it, it started getting drawn out. You know st we were working, um, you know p p we have jobs. You know there's it takes a lot of time. And uh, they they just had to step away. Uh, college, work, family, uh, you know, things happening in the family that, you know. So I decided to just from then on go ahead and pursue uh, this on my own and continue working um, at it. And you know, development it does, is not just coding. Development is everything. Uh, designing characters, designing uh, the type of game you want to make. Uh, there's a lot of design that goes into it because if you have no design foundation of the game you're making then what are you developing can you tell me the status of be awesome games is it a registered company uh no it's not a company my name's jonathan slayball and be awesome games is my trade name i'm a sole proprietorship right now that may change uh, might become an llc soon up until the steam you know the, the steam release i've never sold anything you know kickstarter uh, people backed my game. They they pledged and backed it and invested in my project. Um, so I've never needed to be a company. I've, I've never made a game before. I'm just a sole proprietor working. I've uh, been developing this game for two years. And there I said developing again. But um, uh, I'm not a company. J.O., I have some questions about taxes and my own information as well that I'd like to bring to the table. Uh, are you open to answering any questions about the awesome games or taxes or anything like that? And from what I understand, you are a sole proprietor. You have some some stuff going on, but I'm not an expert. I'm not a legal expert. I'm not a tax consultant, so my knowledge is limited. Uh, are you opening to, or are you open to answering some questions about that? Um, not really, because I need to, um, I'm not a lawyer either, and I'm not an accountant, and if I answered questions, I'm, I'm not 100% sure that I would be answering them correctly, so um, I am, or, you know, I've got a lawyer now, um, but obviously I'd need to talk to him before I would answer those questions to see what I should say, um, you know, same with an accountant, um, so... At this time, I just I can't comment on those types of questions because I I might say something and it might be wrong. I might say something and it might be right. I might say something that I should probably not say. So. All right. So you don't you don't want to go anywhere near tax questions. No. All I know is the government's going to get their money <laughs> and uh, they're going to take a chunk. So. So there have been many claims of stolen art on the website and as well for the project's banner picture, the main logo of the project. People claim stolen art. People claim that it's, it's, it was a very scummy way to promote the product. It was misleading, this and that. Could you iterate a little bit and give me some answers? Was any art stolen? Did you, did you take any art that wasn't yours? I would love to answer this question. Um... 
and I've already answered it in the community, but of course there's a lot of people that haven't heard the answer to it. So the main splash image for our game, the big red dragon flying in the air, um, I purchased that uh, a, a non-exclusive license for that from Gen LH um, on ArtStation, and anybody can find it in the ArtStation marketplace. And um, you know, I purchased the license. I have the license. I can show people that I purchased it. Um, so uh, I think the main concern was some other studio was using the same image. So people saw a watermarked image of that, and they said, "Oh, you." removed the watermark and you stole the image um, but they bought it from the same person I bought it from it's a non-exclusive license that means anybody can use it uh, for their project I bought a, uh, a theme for our website um, and it included a bunch of um, artwork in the theme I don't really know you know when you when you are purchasing something online you assume that when you buy something everything in that uh, they have the rights to give that to you you know to include it in your purchase and so I went ahead and I, I purchased that I had no intention of using that artwork um, but I installed the theme you know I went to remaking and redesigning the theme and uh, and then uh, I was up till about three o'clock in the morning and I said you know I'm going to bed there was one concept left or two, a background and a main concept. There's two concept images left on the website that were left over from that theme purchase. I get up in the morning, I get on Discord, and there's all kinds of accusations about me stealing art from some dude on ArtStation. And people found the artwork, uh, the, the game owner who licensed that from this artist, um, he wanted to know why we were using his art. I explained to him the whole situation. He contacted the people selling the theme, and they since then have um, removed all that artwork from uh, the, their store. J.O., given your inexperience with game development um, in the way of UE4, do you plan to bring a programmer on board with this project? My consult actually suggested that you should try to bring someone on with programming knowledge or some experience working within the game engine. Do you have any plans at all to bring experience, experienced individuals in to help you program and create the game, given the scope and funding this project now has? I'm open to it if I need it. You know, I don't want to spend money that I don't have to. Um, so far, I've been able to do everything myself. I'm, I'm a noob, you know, but I, you know, look at my server. You know, the stress test, uh, the thing's been up for four days. It's my first online server, my first multiplayer game, and it hasn't even crashed once. Uh, this stuff is, you know, game development is new to me, but programming is not. I know how to structure my code. I know how to organize, um, and I know, know how to um, make what I want to happen, happen. And, and nothing I'm doing in this game is really revolutionary. Everything is pretty much... I mean, a lot of the stuff's already done, um, and the stuff that's not done is going to be pretty easy for me to do because I already know how to do it because I've already done it in my um, uh, other project. So uh, if I get into something that I don't know how to do and I can't figure it out, and there's very few things that I can't figure out um, when it comes to gray area and I don't know what I'm doing uh, there's um, I've had several programmers to work for AAA studios already reach out to me and say hey if you ever need any help we'll be happy to help you there's been a lot of talk about lawyers and needing legal counsel for your game and I know it was made mentioned by two prominent youtubers I want to know why you need a lawyer and what exactly the lawyer is for. I also took note that you will be speaking to an attorney about IGP and his video and the impact that it had on you for your community, as in slander, inciting panic, inducing stress, etc. Yeah, so every business has a lawyer. Um, for somebody to go ahead and mock me and scoff at me um, about getting a lawyer and then claiming that the whole reason that we want a lawyer is you know, to protect ourselves when all the Kickstarter backers uh, decide to sue us for being a scam. That's basically what he said. Um, that's a bunch of crap. Um, we need a lawyer because every business needs a lawyer. And 
the main reason I wanted a lawyer was because I got all these big companies. I mean, I've been contacted by some, I'm not going to name them off here on YouTube, but I've been contacted by the biggest companies in the industry. And, you know, there's contracts people want me to sign and it's a bunch of legal jargon. I, I'm not a lawyer. I don't want to be signing something where I regret it a year from now. Um, I want to make sure that uh, anything I sign is uh, in my best interest and in the best interest of um, this game. And uh, so I need a lawyer for, for contracts. Um, J.O., speaking of the issues you have with IGP, your response to him, some might say, have been defining defamation. What do you think about that? I think that if he wants to go ahead and run my name through the dirt and try to um, incite panic and pretend that um, he was completely innocent um, in all of this, um, I think my my uh, strong um, words towards him are very warranted. Um, he's not a journalist. He's not a newscaster. Um, it, he's supposed to promote independent game developers, not tear them down. And when he goes in, he attacks a, uh, a first-time dev in a small uh, indie studio made up of friends that have been playing games for a long time together. Um, two weeks out of our Kickstarter project, um, he's got he's got um, malicious intent towards us. There's something personal going on there. Something, some kind of point he's pr trying to prove with you know using his one and a half million um, YouTube subscribers as leverage. Um, you know, and, and as soon as he posted that video, you know, and, and during the video he he was saying, now don't. Uh, do anything, you know, don't do this, don't raid their server. It was like he was giving them suggestions at the, by not giving that, by telling them not to do that. And guess what happened um, right after he posted that video? Our, our Discord server was raided. Um, our YouTube channel was raided. Our email inbox was raided. Somebody tried hacking my password. Um, our uh, our uh, uh, Steam store page was raided. Um, all this stuff that he told people not to do in that video, people were doing it. Um, was he using reverse psychology? Um, I think so. And, uh, you know, I said it in uh, chat. I want to say it here on your video. He's a jerk. Um, he's what he did was malicious. And uh, I hope I hope YouTube uh, removes his channel um, because he has no business um, having a YouTube channel when he uses his uh, YouTube subscribers to bash, demoralize, and demean um, small indie game studios that are just getting started, especially when he uses deceit, uh, deception and lies, uh, you know, cropping quotes. He took uh, screenshots of things I said in Discord. He cropped them to make it seem like I was saying something I didn't say, uh, just to put, just to push his point across that this game's a scam. Uh, what he did was was dirty and uh, very malicious. All right, I won't be touching base on the IGP situation any further, uh, given how fresh the wound is still. Um, I'm no, I know you're aware that a lot of what IGP had to say in his video falls in line with how I feel, not in the sense of the mystery surrounding J.O. and this and that, but more so the critical questions of just in general what the community has been asking so far, which I hope up to now have been answered in some way, shape, or form. Uh, I, as a content creator, I, I can't agree with having someone removed from YouTube um, for stating their opinions. Uh, and if those opinions are malicious or you feel they are, that, that is entirely your opinion. You are entitled to your opinion and you stand your ground if that is your opinion. I feel some of the questions were warranted. However, at the same time, anyone can ask as a public figure not to raid or witch hunt, but unfortunately, it is still... A co it is still an effect to the cause. It still happens no matter what. And knowingly, we go into this as content creators that that is still going to happen. If Even if we ask not to, because the most diehard of diehard fans will always try to do something in defense of some of their favorite creators or the people they look up to. 
That's a responsibility that Gaming Beaver himself even stated in one of his videos. I fall in line with that. Is there some responsibility? Oh, there's definitely, in my opinion, some responsibility. Very well uh, versed in programming. Uh, I don't foresee myself needing to hire a programmer. Um, so y'all- So, uh, in that one section um, of Gina's video, you claim to be a well-versed programmer and you don't foresee needing another programmer for a project. Um, having learned C++ code over the course of the last five months or so and the complexity in that code, uh, and given that this was a statement made during the Kickstarter campaign, do you feel that this may have been taken as misleading at all or just a misleading, a misleading statement? Yeah, so when I made that statement, um, it was 100% true. I am well versed in programming. Um, you know, it, I guess it could be used to, you know, um, say that I'm, uh, I, I never said I'm well versed in all programming. Uh, when I say programming, I'm talking about the programming that, you know, I know how to do, which is uh, Java, HTML, PHP. Um, those are my strong languages. Um, and, you know, when it comes to C++, it's similar. It's not the same, but it's similar enough to Java to where um, it makes learning it for me a whole lot easier. Um, and I've been, you know, learning it since um, May of this year. Uh, and with my background in Java, it speeds up the process. You know, I, I'm, I'm not coming into this cold turkey like I don't understand programming languages at all. Uh, when I say, you know, I'm well-versed in programming, I am. Um, I never said I was well-versed in C++. I do, I, I do believe I can honestly say now that I know uh, C++. I'm not a, you know, I'm not very experienced. I've only been doing it for about five months. Um, it's been a learning process. So there's a lot of people out there that are going to be a lot better at it than I am. Um, but I have been programming uh, in one language or another uh, since I was 19 years old. So, Given that the video is a dev Q&A and you had stated that you were a well-versed programmer, granted you had the intention of saying, you know, programming in your own languages that you were used to, do you feel that it may be misleading or even misinterpreted as you have the ability to code in all aspects of gaming being C++? Do you feel that that may have indirectly or directly implied you have significant ability, whereas you may not have that same ability in real world practice? I'm well versed in programming. Um, I never said C++, even though C++ is its own language. Um, if you can program in one language and then learn another language, you can then program in that language. Programming follows a certain set of rules. You know, you, uh, you, the, the, you know how you build, uh, how you build it from the ground up. You know all the uh, the functions and everything that you make in programming. The language is different. The syntax is different, but um, the procedures. Uh, it's all pretty much the same, so. That concludes my developer interview and the audit of credibility with developer J.O. There are some questions still in the air. I did not have time to get everything out on the table, given the immense time this video took to create. You guys come to your own conclusions and make your own opinions. For me and what I think, I think there's going to be a game. I don't know the quality of the game, but there is at some point, I believe, going to be a game. How good that game is, is yet to be determined. I'm going to leave this off with giving you guys an idea of at least where some of the money is going right now into sound development. And then, well, that's pretty well it unless I decide to make a part two. More than likely, there's going to be a part two. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.